Welcome my dear learners for this course on Engineering Graphics. In our module 3, we were discussing about orthographic projection of solids. In our previous lecture, I have concluded our discussion on triangular pyramid that is tetrahedron. Let us move on and discuss the orthographic projection of cones. In analyzing the projection of cones, if you observe the cone in the front view, you, it looks like an triangle. Whereas if I look the cone from top, you will get an circle. The nomenclature used in cone is these edges which we consider are termed as slant generators. Whereas in case of pyramids, we call these edges, the longer edges as slant edges. The difference between edge and generator is that edge are true in nature whereas the generators are imaginary lines. So if I use slant edge to define a longer edge then it is truly existing. If I use slant generator for the longer edge it means that the edge is imaginary. Truly there will not be any edge for a cone. If you observe cone you won't see any edges in cone. But for our reference we consider this longer edges as slant generators. Whenever you see the word generator then it means that it is an imaginary line which is considered as an edge. If I use slant edge then that is truly existing line. If I use slant generators then it is an imaginary line. And also for cone the circular part is termed as base. The height of the cone is defined by the length of the axis and the top part of the cone is termed as apex. So the, now coming for the nomenclature of the cone, the circular portion at the bottom is termed as base. The height of the cone is defined by the length of the axis. The top part is termed as apex and these imaginary lines which we use to represent cone are termed as slant generators. This is front view and this is top view of the cone. With this basic knowledge on cone, let us solve our first problem on cone. Problem number 17 of our discussion states that a cone of 50 mm base diameter and 60 mm axis length rests on HP on one of its generators. Draw its projection when the axis is inclined to BP at 30 degree. So if you observe, the cone is resting on HP with one of its generators. Since it is resting on HP, in the first position, I should make this cone stand on HP without inclining to any of the planes. In the second position, I should show the inclination with respect to HP itself. In the third position, the remaining inclination is with respect to vertical plane is clearly stating the axis inclined to BP at 30 degree. If you again read this sentence, he has not stated whether the 30 degree in its top view or it is appears to be inclined. Since it is a continuous sentence without using the word appears to be or in the top view, this is a true inclination given for the true length of the axis. Make a note of it. So therefore, the solution for the problem will be in the first position, cone stands on HP. In the second position, cone rests on HP with one of its generators. And in the third position axis is inclined to VP at 30 degrees. Let me draw XY line first. This is vertical plane and this is horizontal plane. Now in the first position I will draw the cone such a way that 
it will not incline into any of the planes. If I do that, in the top view, I will get a circle. In the front view, I will get a triangle. Therefore, if I draw the top view, I will get a circle whose base diameter is 50 mm. So therefore, draw a circle with radius 25 millimeters. Once I draw a circle of 25 millimeters, once we move on for our second position, third position, the circular base will become ellipse or curve. In order to avoid difficulty in drawing the or representing the ellipse position or the curve, let us use some imaginary lines on this diameter so that it is easy for us to mark the ellipse positions or curve positions which we will be encountering in our further steps. Therefore, for accuracy, you can go for 16 points on this circumference and with 8 points also we can do it. Let us go for 8 points. Therefore, I divide this circle into 8 equal halves which means I will divide the circle with 45 degree portions each. First, you divide this circle into 4 portions. Then, mark 45 degree on either side and divide further. We will get 8 points on this circumference. After marking 45 degrees on either side, divide it further to get 8 sectors. Now, I have got 8 points on the circumference. These lines which I have drawn with the green chalk are only for our convenience. So therefore, this should be very thin lines. These are the imaginary lines which we are using to make further steps easier. So therefore, these must be very very thin lines whereas the diameter should be very thick line. So that the circumference of the circle make it very thick whereas these are the projection lines which should be very thin. Now, marking the corners on this circumference, I will get this as A, B. Now, take the projection vertically upwards and mark the axis. The axis length is given to us which is 60 mm length. If I do that, I will get. Now, after marking the axis length as 60 millimeters, connect to the outer corners with a dark line from the apex on either side. Since these points are only for our reference which are imaginary in nature, draw a very thin line for inner longer imaginary lines. If you observe, even though we have an imaginary line coming at the center, I am marking the axis. This is because there is no existence of true edge. Longer imaginary line which is connecting from C to O which is coming in front of the axis is imaginary in nature. Therefore, I am giving preference for axis rather than the imaginary line. Now, mark the axis length and also the diameter. In the top view, the axis is O and O1. In the front view, observer will be here to the observer, the corners A, B, C, D, E are visible corners, whereas F, G, H are invisible corners. If I mark that, I will get E prime. B prime is visible, whereas H prime is invisible. At the center, C prime is visible whereas O1 prime is invisible and G prime is also invisible. Finally, here D prime visible whereas 
left brain is invisible. At the apex, you have O-brain. This completes the front view and top view when the cone is standing on horizontal plane without inclining to any of the planes. Now, moving on to the second position, he is clearly stating that the cone will rest on HP with one of its generators. As I explained in the beginning of this lecture, these are called generators. The longest slant lines are termed as generators because these are imaginary lines. We don't have true edge for cone. Don't get confused with slant generator and these inner longer lines. These inner longer lines are also an imaginary lines which we have used for our convenience to construct ellipse or curve which we will be encountering in our further positions. Now, since both sides I have the generator, I can rotate it and rest by rotating it counterclockwise or I can rotate it and rest by rotating it clockwise. Let us follow our convention in which we are always rotating clockwise and construct the slant generator on this xy line. Therefore, I have transferred E prime and O prime. Now, measure the angle of this base with respect to the slant generator coming around 70 degrees. So, transfer 70 degrees counterclockwise. Now, this base length is known, which is nothing but the diameter. The diameter is given to us, which is 50 mm. Now, draw a line at an angle which we have just now transferred, whose length is 50 millimeters. Thereby, I have transferred corner A prime. Now, join A prime to O prime. Now, measure these corners. B prime, G prime, F prime and transfer on this baseline E prime, A prime. Now connect these corners to O prime with very thin lines and also you connect the axis. Therefore, I have transferred B prime, H prime. At the center we have C prime and G prime and here we have B prime and F prime. So this completes the front view in second position. Now take the projection vertically downwards and also from horizontal. If I do that, I will get after taking the projections, mark the corners. If I mark the corners, I will get C, B, a, B, E, F, G and again H. Now the axis will be O1 and O. In the top view, observer will be here. Since the base is outward to the cone, the base is completely visible to the observer. If base comes inward like this, then some portion of this base will become invisible to the observer. Since the base is completely visible to the observer, you draw this ellipse completely visible. No need to check for the longer edges because longer edges are nothing but the imaginary lines. They are not true edges. They are generators. Therefore, you should check for imaginary lines only in the base. Since the base is coming outward of the cone, the base is completely visible to the observer. So therefore, this ellipse is completely visible. No need to worry about the longer lines. Drawing a freehand sketch, I will get
So this completes the base which is completely visible. Now mark the axis first with dashed lines, dots in between. Connect the generators with dark line that is O to C and O to G. Now no need to draw any lines further. This completes the core in the second position top. Moving on to the third position, it clearly states that the axis is inclined to VP at 30 degree. For 60 mm, he has given as 30 degree inclination. Find out for this apparent length how much is the inclination, which is nothing but beta angle for this problem. Let us do it. If I draw a 30 degree line and construct the diagram might enter the vertical plane. So therefore, offset this axis by taking a parallel line. Now, on this offset parallel line to the xy line, you measure 30 degrees. At 30 degree, you draw a reference line for an arbitrary length. Now, on this 30 degree line, you mark the true dimension of the axis. Let us take the reference point O and mark the another point of the true dimension. We know the height as 60 millimeters. I have marked 60 mm on this true inclination that is 30 degree. The true length of the axis is 60 millimeters. Now fix the locus at the end nearer to the observer. Now using compass you measure O1 to O which is an apparent dimension for us. Keeping O as center intersect this new locus. Which will give us the point O1. Now join O O1 which is an axis for us and extend it to intersect the xy line or the parallel line which we have drawn to xy line. Now if I measure the beta angle, the beta angle for the problem is turning out to be 34 degrees. Now to transfer this ellipse with minor diameter A and major diameter GC, you construct an rectangle around this. First, you transfer that rectangle keeping O1 as center. So therefore, the rectangle, so construct that rectangle keeping O1 as center. Once you transfer that rectangle keeping O1 as center, now find position G which is already known to us, find position C that is also already known to us. Therefore mark G and C. Also we have point A and E. Now to transfer F, H, D, B use compass method that is Measure G to H and G to F transfer it. You measure A to H and E to F cut the arc. So this completes the transferring of corners F and H. Similarly, you measure C to B and C to D. Transfer it. Finally, you measure A to B and E to D. Intersect this arc. With a free hand, draw a curve.
Now join C2 O and G2 O. Now take the projections vertically upwards and also from horizontal. If I do that, I'll get after taking the projection vertically upwards and also from horizontal marking respective corners. Now join the axis first. That is O one prime to O prime. In the front view, observer will be here. Since base is nearer to the observer, to the observer, the base is completely visible. So therefore, join all the respective corners with dark lines, continuous lines in freehand sketch. So if I do that, I will get So we have F prime here. So once you complete the freehand sketch, now join A prime to O prime and E prime to O prime. So if we do that, I'll get. So this completes the given problem in which the cone is resting on one of its slant generators on horizontal plane. As usual, I use the same color for these two front views. Which means that these two are of same dimensions, and same color for these two top views. Which means that these two are of same dimensions. That's all from this lecture. Thank you.